This happened last year. We live in a small town in Texas, and it was a week before the 4th of July. The town mayor decided to celebrate Independence Day with a barbecue and fireworks at the big field near the community center. Everyone was pretty excited to go there, except me. I had a dog named Macy back then. I hated fireworks, as they would scare her to death. But under my parents' pressure, I had to attend the event on July 4th, leaving Macy at home, locked up in the basement. Macy is a Pomeranian and has a bad temper when she's agitated. So putting her in the basement was my only option to keep her calm on the night of July 4th. I kissed her goodbye and got in the car with my parents to head to the community center. Upon reaching there, I realized the entire town had gathered there. People were laughing and enjoying food cooked in the open air. A group of people were seen setting the fireworks at the end of the field, out there in safety. I was always an introvert and preferred dogs over humans, so I didn't feel the urge to strike up conversations with any kid of my age present there. On the other hand, my mom and dad went straight to the mayor's family and started chatting with them. My dad owned the biggest milk factory in the town, so keeping the mayor happy was always his biggest concern in life. My mom would join him as a perfect companion. Well, they were doing what they had to do, so I isolated myself from them pretty quickly. The mayor's wife Fiona was a weird lady. She always dressed up younger than her age, which ultimately made her look even older. And every time she saw me, she would pull my cheeks so hard that one time I even got a blood clot. So, avoiding all of that without getting noticed, I went to this small barbecue stall that was roasting some lamb. I got some for myself and went to watch the 4th of July parade. People were laughing and enjoying the evening. The marching band consisted of a group of 10 to 15 men playing the drums and clarinets marching in synchronized harmony. Their extravagant costumes topped with a white feather hat made them look pretty funny. I was standing there, watching them, enjoying my roasted lamb. Kids were cheering in joy seeing the band. Everything was going perfectly fine, when a small accident happened. A man in the marching band suddenly tripped and fell on the muddy green field. I was standing close to the man, hence when he fell and I casually chuckled. Though he wasn't hurt, the mud kind of ruined his red-white uniform. A patch of dirt stuck to his face when he got up and looked at me. I stopped laughing as our eyes met. There was anger in his owl-like eyes that gave me goosebumps. I stopped laughing. He rejoined the band after dusting the dirt from his clothes, and I went back to the barbecue. I ate some more, and when I was full, I wanted to go back home and play some video games. I was worried for Macy as well, so I went to my parents, who were busy drinking with our neighbors. Um, Mom, I think I better go home. Macy will get scared all alone. You want to leave now? Ugh, come on, just stay till the fireworks. No, Dad, I better go home and be with Macy. I already ate, so... Well, who's gonna give you a ride now? Everyone's here. <laughs> I'm drunk already. It's fine, I'll just walk. You sure, darling? Yes, Mom. Okay, call us once you get home, alright? I will. Leaving the joyful evening and cheering faces behind, I began to head home. The streets were so empty that at one point, it felt like the entire town had been evacuated overnight. I was walking alone and could hear people cheering. The sound of the marching band slowly faded away. It got so quiet all of a sudden that I could hear the night sounds, which were so long subdued by the 4th of July celebration. The sounds of crickets and frogs came from the woods. A huge black bat flew over my head, making a disturbing screeching sound, and I almost screamed. I didn't expect you to be such an easy scare. <laughs> I turned back in shock and saw that it was that man from the marching band. He was still wearing his outrageous uniform. I didn't see you were walking behind me. When did you... He didn't let me finish and said, You like laughing at people, huh? What? People's misery is fun to you, huh? No, I, I didn't mean to. Wait, are, are you following me? I had to make sure you reached home safely. After all, there's no one here to save you if you get in trouble. <laughs> the words came out of his mouth like a twisted warning. 
I had no idea how long this freak was following me, but I knew he was right. I'm standing in a deserted street with a weird stranger whom I've pissed off. One wrong move can get me in serious trouble, no doubt. Keeping my calm and using my brain, I decided to apologize. Look, I I'm sorry. It wasn't my intention to insult you. Hmm. Do you mean this? Or you're just saying it to get rid of me? No, no, no. I, I mean it. I really, truly... Okay. Still no reason I can't walk you home. After all, you're just a kid. And life is a nightmare. <laughs> At this point, I've had enough. This man has come here for revenge, and he's going to take it one way or another. Suddenly, a firework struck right above us, lighting the sky, and I began to run towards my house. The man screamed from behind. Where are you going? We just became friends! We'll never be friends, you freak! Now, he began to chase me. He had long legs and arms. So, when he ran, stretching them to catch me, I got even more freaked out. I made my way through the sidewalks, cutting to a small lane for a shortcut, and the man followed. He yelled while running. You insulted me, and then lied to me, and insulted me again! You have huge guts, kid! I shall teach you some manners! Stop! Stop, you little prick! Leave me alone! But he didn't. I jumped on the porch once I reached home and took out the keys to unlock the door. My hands were shaking. My body was sweating in fear as I struggled to unlock the door. The key fell from my hand out of nervousness, and I saw him. The man had entered our yard by jumping over the fences. My hell! I picked up the key and finally unlocked the door. Once I got in, the man got on the porch. But before he could grab me, I slammed the door right on his face, locking him outside. He slowly slid to the window next to our door and watched me. For a moment, I thought he would break the glass window and get in, but luckily, he didn't. The fireworks began, and in that shower of colorful lightning and ear-bursting loud crackles, the man and I stood like two statues. He was staring at me while smiling like a psycho. I took out my phone from my pocket and screamed at him, saying, I'm gonna call my parents right now! You better leave, or you're gonna rot in jail! My threat didn't bother him at all. He looked up at the sky, and then wiped his face. I regret not running faster. <laughs> but don't worry. This isn't the end. No, no, no. I'll see you next year. Same day, same time. <laughs> he then turned around to leave, but again looked back at me and said, Happy Fourth of July! <laughs> Use your freedom wisely. <laughs> I haven't seen that man since, but now that Independence Day is coming closer, I'm terrified to go out and celebrate the 4th of July in this town. Hey guys, thanks so much for all the support. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please feel free to do so. I know everyone enjoys fireworks, but the 4th of July is not my favorite holiday. I used to enjoy fireworks, but my brother Josh is really scared of them. So over time, I grew to dislike them too. That 4th of July was a clear, starry night, perfect for fireworks. My parents and I closed all the windows so Josh wouldn't get scared and sat down to watch a comedy movie. Everything was going well until my dad got a call on his cell phone and went to the kitchen to answer it. When he came back, he was really worried, called my mom, and after a moment, they asked me to pause the movie and talk to me. Lori, listen. We got an emergency call from the aunt. She had an accident at the house, and we have to go help her. Can you stay here? Of course. We'll be fine. I am a big girl now. Be good, and don't go out in the street or the yard. Stay watching the movie and we'll be back before it's over, okay, hun? They both left in the car, so I sat with Josh to watch the movie. After a few minutes, I got a little hungry. I went to the cupboard to get some cookies, and something caught my attention. The door to the backyard was open. I went to close it, but halfway there, I stood still. 
frozen with fear at what I was seeing. A man dressed as a doctor was timidly leaning out of the backyard window. His smile was tetric and went from ear to ear, showing his perfect white teeth. <laughs> you found me. Who the fuck are you? Oh, manners, Lori. I don't think you're a good example for little Josh. <laughs> what? How do you know our names? What the hell do you want? I guess I can answer you. It's just rude of me not to introduce myself. I'm Willie. Willie the doctor. What? What you heard, silly. I came to greet the family on this special day. <laughs> This man was clearly a lunatic. I started walking backward as he approached me at the same speed. I heard Joshua doesn't like the 4th of July. Do you mind if I have a chat with him? Get the fuck away from him, you psycho! With that said, we both ran out at the same time and I slammed the kitchen door in his face. Meanwhile, the man was kicking the door and shouting, Lori! Lori, 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 Lori! <laughs> Lori! Where is Josh? <laughs> Startled, Josh stared at the door with wide eyes, not understanding what was happening. Josh, go up to your room, now! Without thinking, the boy understood the situation and ran as fast as he could. I grabbed a vase and stayed to confront the man. I was not going to let anything happen to Josh. I was going to defend him even if I had to sacrifice my own life in the process. The man rammed the door and with just two blows knocked it down and looked me in the eye, smiling. Oh, hi, Lori. I don't know who the hell you are, but I'm not going to let you hurt my brother. You don't scare me. <laughs> Come on, Lori. We both know you can't take care of Josh. The kid will die. And it will be your fault. <laughs> you have to let Josh go. This is for your own good. <laughs> you won't do anything to him, you bastard. With all my strength, I rushed at the man to hit him, but he easily grabbed my neck, and while I dropped the vase, he spoke to me with a serious and hard tone of voice. Listen to me, you damn brat. I could break your neck right now, but I won't do it. Do you know why? Why? Because you're not going to die today. No, it's going to be your little brother, and you know what? There won't be a day when you won't stop thinking about how you couldn't save him. Because you are nothing, nothing but a useless bitch, a piece of trash, an insect. Now, run to your brother and hide until mommy and daddy come. At least make it fun. The man let go of me, and without hesitation, I ran up the stairs and locked myself in my brother's room. Josh was waiting for me, so I ordered him to get under the bed. Meanwhile, I heard the voice of the man behind the door, slowly approaching. Doctor! Doctor! What is the patient's report? Well, I am sorry to inform you that Lori is having a very hard time coming to terms with her brother's death. Oh, Doctor, that's super funny. <laughs> and how did the little shit die? From a stray bullet. <laughs> After shooting, the psycho started kicking the door down. I hid in the closet as fast as I could. I didn't know if he saw me but his attention was directed to the bottom of the bed, where Josh was. He crouched down, and with a demented grin, saw Josh. Oh, hi, Josh. <laughs> I took advantage of the situation to get out of the closet, and with all my strength, I used the baseball bat that was in the closet, and I hit him in the body. 
The man fell down in pain, and I took advantage of that situation to pull Josh out from under the bed and run with him. I heard my parents arriving, and crying, I went downstairs and hugged them. Dad! Mom! There's someone in the house! He's trying to take Josh! When they saw me, they instantly started crying with me and hugged me. I'm so sorry, Lori. Th this is our fault. We shouldn't have left. What are you doing? We have to go now. He's hurt. This is our chance. No, you don't understand. There's no psycho, Lori. No, you have to believe me. Wh what? When I looked up, the psycho was no longer on the floor. Where the fuck is he? He was just here. No, dear, he was never here. In shock, I started to look around the room. There was no psycho. No holes in the door. Nothing. But Josh also... Josh? He was with me when you guys came in. Where is he? Josh has been dead for five years, honey. He was killed by a stray bullet in the backyard. We're sorry, dear. This was our fault. You weren't ready to leave the Mental Health Institute. No, 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 no! He was here, I swear! I saved him! And that's all I can remember from that night, Dr. Robert. No need for the formality, Lori. We have known each other for a while. Call me William. Of course, Dr. William. Now then, tell me, when you have these episodes, what does Joshua say to you? Josh won't talk to me. Hmm. And why do you think that is? I... I don't remember his voice anymore. Laurie, like I always tell you, you have to stop feeling guilty about your brother's death. You just lured him outside to watch the fireworks. You didn't kill him. You have to let Joshua go. This is for your own good. A little more time here will do you some good. And then you can go home to your parents. You don't understand. I don't want to go back to my parents. I agreed to come back here for a reason. Oh, and what would that reason be? I want you to give me back Josh. The day was July 4th. At this point, I had already studied in school that on that date was Independence Day. But as a little child, that was not what had caught my attention. I was most excited by the red, white, and blue colors, which were everywhere. In the decorations, in the people, and even in the food. That wasn't something I got to see every day. On that occasion, my mom had decided to take me to a fireworks show. So there we were, on the street, at night, in the middle of a bunch of people. I soon noticed that many of them had flags. Mom! What is it, Jake? Why don't I have a flag? I want one! Everyone has one! We... Laura? Suddenly, a lady with brown hair began to approach us. She said my mother's name, so I looked at her closely. Jessica, long time without seeing you. My mom let go of my hand to hug the woman. I see you ended up having a child, huh? Oh, yeah, his name is Jake. Hi, Jake. You are very cute. Hello? Mom started talking to that woman. After a few minutes, I got bored, so I began to look around. I still wanted a flag. Mom? Jake, I'm talking. Don't interrupt me. I was starting to get mad at my mom when, all of a sudden, I began to hear some loud noises. There were lights of various colors on the floor, so I decided to look up at the sky. The fireworks had started. Mom! Fireworks! Unfortunately, soon a group of people began to prevent me from seeing the fireworks, so I took my mom by her arm. Mom! Mom! I can't see them! Can I get closer? Please? Ugh, yes, Jake. Don't go too far. Thanks, Mom! Laura, are you sure? I walked away from Mom and that woman and started moving between the people. It didn't take me long to find a place where I could easily see the fireworks. Wow! They seemed fantastic to me. Every time they exploded in the sky, new colors appeared. Hello, kid. As soon as someone spoke to me, I turned to see the person. I hadn't noticed, but next to me was a woman. She looked weird. What's your name? My mom told me not to talk to strangers. 
Oh, but I'm not a stranger. I've seen your mom before. Your name is Jake, isn't it? The woman had to be telling the truth, so I smiled. Yes, I'm Jake. <laughs> Jake, I noticed you like fireworks, don't you? Yes! Oh, they're amazing! I like them a lot! The woman smiled, but I didn't, because I didn't like her smile. It seemed strange. In fact, everything about her was weird. Her hair was disheveled, her skin was really pale, and she was wearing clothes that were too big for her. I also like fireworks. A lot. Really? Oh, that's cool! My mom and her friend don't like them. That's why they didn't come with me. Do you want to come with me? Huh? In my house, I have many fireworks. Would you like to see them? I have a lot of different colors. Uh, can I go with my mom and her friend? I'd love to invite them, but like you said, they don't like them. So, I don't think they'd like to go. Yeah, you're right. Let's go. The woman took my hand and guided me toward her house. I was excited. What's your name? She stared at me for a few seconds. Aaron. Nice to meet you, Aaron. <laughs> I'm happy to meet you too, Jake. Where is your house? Is it too far? No, it's not. Aaron pointed to the forest that could be seen in the distance, far from all the houses and buildings. See those trees? It's over there. Can you use the fireworks in the forest? <laughs> of course. We're going to have a lot of fun, you'll see. After several minutes, we managed to reach her house. It didn't look like a house to me, as it was a small and old wooden place, but I still followed her. Once we got close enough, Aaron opened the door. Come in, Jake. As I entered, I covered my nose. The place smelled really bad and had no windows, so I couldn't see anything. A Aaron, can you turn on the lights? The lights didn't help me see too much. One of them was even blinking. See all those boxes, Jake? Yes. They are full of fireworks. Do you want to play with me? I looked around me. The place was really dirty and even trashed. How could someone live here? I, I didn't like it. Jake. I put my gaze back on her. I asked if you want to play. Uh, sure. Aaron walked over to one of the boxes and opened it. From it, she took out something that looked like a stick. Mm, what's that? You'll see. The woman took a lighter out of one of her pants pockets and lit it. She then brought the flame closer to the stick. As soon as the fire touched it, it began to shine like a star. Whoa! That's so cool! I know. The woman began to approach me, still with the object in one of her hands. Now. I want to show you another thing about fireworks. Huh? Suddenly, she put the stick on one of my arms. Soon, I began to feel how my skin was burning. Ah! I moved away as fast as I could. Why did you do that? It hurt! <laughs> That's the point. Fireworks explode or burn. Didn't you know that? Slowly, I nodded. Didn't you tell me you liked them? Yeah, but, but I don't want them to hurt me. The smile on the woman's face faded. Something didn't feel right. So you don't like them? Oh, but... You lied to me, Jake. I thought I found someone like me, but you're just a lying, dirty rat. Wh what? Suddenly, she rolled up the sleeve of her oversized sweater and let me take a look at her arm which seemed to be covered in burns. See? <laughs> I truly like them. You... You... I started to cry. <laughs> Are you scared? Please don't hurt me! You lied to me, Jake. You were a bad boy. Do you know what bad kids deserve? A punishment. Stop! Stop, please! <laughs> I tried to walk away. But the woman cornered me. <laughs> you know what? I'll show you. That will be your punishment. You'll be like me. I won't! <laughs> or you'll die. <laughs>
That day, the woman left me locked up in that place. I wanted to escape. I wanted to go home. But I couldn't. It was as if she had everything prepared from the beginning. The next morning, the door banged open, and to my relief, there were two cops with guns in their hands. Turns out, my mom had reported me missing, and the police rescued me. Later, I understood that the woman who abducted me was a psychopath, and was suffering from mental trauma after losing her very own son to a fire accident exactly a year ago on the 4th of July. Therefore, everyone, please be careful, as this world is full of evil, twisted people around us.